of the WTO, Rugwabiza, about Rwanda and uh, the gorillas and the communities that live around those uh, uh, attractions. The idea really is that those that have concessions for those attractions should be able to share the benefits uh, with the local communities. The local communities will then appreciate the need to conserve that resource for sustainability. So it is very important that in the leases or concessions that are crafted, these aspects are taken into account. Many people have talked about critical role of public-private sector partnership, and I will not go into those details because it has already been uh, well articulated. The benefit and retention of earnings uh, for the host countries in order to avoid uh, leakages. And this is uh, an issue that uh, uh, confounds most of the LDCs, where you have big uh, establishments, uh, big hotels, uh, you know, circuits are, um, are done outside the country. They just visit your country and they leave. Maybe they stay for a day and so forth. So the earnings are not staying in the country. There is need to address uh, that challenge. Training and human capacity development. Now, this is very important. If I go to uh, Uganda, I go and stay at a hotel, I want, when I talk to the workers, to be able to understand something about Uganda. They have to know something about where they are operating from. I, when I pick up a product, what, a handicraft that is made in Uganda, I want to know something more about it. So there is need for training uh, within the, the context uh, of uh, the attraction that uh, you are promoting. Now, there is this need to have a coordination and coherence with, with other sectors. Zambia is uh, predominantly a mining company, a mining uh, country. Now, what happens is that, uh, of course, there are minerals everywhere in Zambia. How do you then uh, have some coherence with tourism? If I want to build, uh, start up a mine in a forest area, and there's the competing interest of uh, wildlife, which sector is going to be given priority? And my argument has been that, of course, when it comes to mining, I'm going to have tremendous earnings in the next 20 years, then the resource will be depleted. But if I go into tourism, I know that for the next 100 years, the wildlife, if properly managed, will still be sustained, and I'll still be earning my money. So it is important to have this coherence and coordination. The second issue uh, is the effective marketing and positioning strategies. And this has been talked about again, and it goes to how you brand yourself, how you create a niche, how you put out information uh, out there. As we've heard today, tourists are searching and making their own judgments. Uh, you don't have to convince them, they'll go and search. Uh, so you need to put out information that will be necessary to get the tourists uh, to travel to your country. The third issue I want to raise is the learning from experiences of other countries, sharing success stories. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. The answers that we are searching for have already been discovered by somebody else. So the, there's need to simply learn from what uh, the experiences of others. Now this leads me to the issue of the experiences, sharing experiences. And this is what I call the precedents that are out there for us to, to build on. We have heard from the four thematic uh, uh, workshops that were held and the experiences and recommendations that have been made. And without uh, going into those uh, details, the question is how we move from ideas of projects to actual project development, from concepts to concrete actions in country and target the necessary donor and financial interest. For instance, in terms of horticulture and handicrafts, 
how do we support the countries in, to structure projects that will ensure building on the experience of others, that the sectors are integrated in the supply value chain to this, the tourism sector? How can we ensure that the issues of quality and supply consistency are addressed? How can we design an inclusive supply structure? Solutions to these issues have been varied in our deliberations. And it is true, uh, um, and citing the words of uh, Patricia, there's no silver bullet. There's no one size fits all. It has to be addressed con contextually. It is important in all these uh, uh, so issues that we understand the requirements of the market firstly. Firstly, that we understand the requirements of the market. How the market policy is structured. We have heard in the discussions uh, under horticulture that some uh, hotel chains would rather have uh, uh, an agent that does the buying for them. Others have, through the associations, established intermediaries that do the quality check and so forth and then supply to the, to the big chain. So you need to understand the market. What is the market policy in order for you to respond effectively? The use of intermediaries to create the critical mass and carry out the quality assurance presents one of uh, the more viable solutions uh, in this regard. And uh, we've had a typical example of Tanzania and how this is, is, is possible. Now, the financing arrangements will only be viable once these value supply chains are properly crafted. When you are clear that as a farmer, I will be able to have the market when I do produce. It will be easy for you to work in the bank because you are sure of the market. The bank will be able to finance you. So then finances become easy to attract once the supply uh, value chain is very clear. Again, the solutions that we seek should integrate the sourcing uh, from women. And we have heard uh, statistics, statistics out of uh, Uganda of the important role that uh, the women can play in finding these solutions. At the end of the day, the solutions have to be about business sense. This is about money. So you can't, whatever solution you find, it has to be about business. It has to be about making money. Those that are in this sector are looking to make money. That's the bottom line. Now, my closing argument, what is the role that ITC can play? As you are aware, and we've heard from uh, Dorothy this morning, the EIF is one of those entry points that the ITC could utilize. The EIF uh, is a program designed to assist LDCs build trade capacity um, in order to meet uh, the supply side constraints. Now, the EIF has been having uh, a challenge, and this is a challenge of absorption capacity. There's money out there. I think there's about 130 million still there. We've only used about 40 million, something like that. So. There's a lot of money sitting there. It is not being absorbed. And when we did the analysis of why this is so, it was discovered that the problem is that the countries are unable to generate uh, bankable projects to present to the EIF to get the funding. Now, so having identified this constraint, the idea is that we should then go in country as ITC, having identify the priorities, and tourism is one of those. Go in country, support the focal point, who is in charge of implementing, support the NIU, which is uh, tasked with implementing, in order to come up with these bankable projects. 
and then assist them in ensuring that you work with the, uh, the donors in order to leverage financing for those projects. This is, I think, the entry point for ITC, and this is what uh, I think is a deliverable uh, out of uh, WEDEV. The last uh, point that I want to make on the role of the ITC is probably the most important one. And this is follow up, follow up, follow up. Patricia, I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Mwape. I know that, uh, that that's a chant we have inside of ITC as well and why indeed we sat and put up uh, an action plan together with the government of China following up on uh, WEDEF 2010. And we plan to do the same thing here. Uh, clearly we have our four projects which we will be working on, but I think that that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. A relationship with UNWTO, a continuing relationship with other partners that we, that we have uh, in moving this kind of activity forward, meeting the needs of LDCs as they have identified tourism as being one of the key pillars of economic development going forward, that yes, um, we will be looking to do this and to certainly publish and report on it. Uh, of course, you will be, you will be chairing our, uh, or handing over the chairmanship in, at the end of June for our joint advisory group meeting and we will have to be reporting there as to what has happened here at WEDEF. So I would like, before uh, Jim does the closing, to personally thank uh, everyone who has participated in this event to make it such a active and dynamic kind of event which has resulted in, I think, good output for us to move forward on. Uh, to recognize that, uh, you know, this has been a process that indeed we had a set of, of, of brainstorming sessions, both with African, uh, with, with multinational corporations looking at Af investing in Africa and multinationals looking at investing in Asia. From them, we, we got the ideas about what were the serious challenges that they were facing in investing in your countries. And secondly, the workshop that we had in Nairobi where we further brought together experts to look at, uh, along with stakeholders, the ideas that, you, that, that have been presented here today. And to, uh, to certainly say that for those of you who have uh, participated in the last day and a half, I think you have certainly enriched, based on what I hear, the project ideas to the point where countries can go back now and further develop these projects. And hopefully we will be able to find the kinds of partnerships to move them forward. So I thank you also for that. And I want to finally thank my staff who have uh, really put out a massive effort in making the day and a half uh, worthwhile. And uh, of course, to the government of Turkey, to the UNWTO, and to SECO, who have also supported us uh, financially to make this day and a half happen. So my final thank you to Jim, uh, who has helped us to to put some of these ideas together and of course who we will be counting on to help us uh, think through what next. So I hand over to you and thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Patricia, and, and distinguished panel for a very, very, very excellent uh, closing to this event. That does conclude what if. Um, obviously, it's very important uh, what happened in the last day and a half that it was meaningful to you. So do fill out those forms and, and give any feedback that, that you think is pertinent. And I think as the closing speaker said, it's very important to follow up and communicate. So do keep in touch with everybody you met here. That's a very much an important part of taking this process forward. And that uh, again concludes uh, WEDEF and uh, thank you for your attendance. <laughs>